morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We will get things going here shortly. We're just letting everybody in to join the webinar and we will get started soon. Thank you again for being here. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here for our third day of college boot camp. We are really excited for today. This is our financial aid scholarships and money saving tips for college. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We have some wonderful guests here today to present some great information for you. Uh, and so we will just go ahead and get things started. And first, what we're going to do is just a couple brief introductions. Uh, my name is Mrs. Edwards. I'm the career counselor at Atley High School. Ms. Bolander. Ms. Hi, I'm Allison Bolander. <laughs> Sorry, career counselor from Mechanicsville High School. Hi, I'm April Corbin, and I'm the career counselor at Hanover High School. I'm Jennifer Crowder. I'm the career counselor at Patrick Henry High School. Hi, and I'm Patty Wood. I'm the GRASP advisor for Atlee High School. Thank you, everyone. And we also have our partners from Reynolds Community College here with us today. You'll be hearing from them shortly and they will introduce themselves soon. So with that, we are actually gonna just go ahead and start with the scholarships portion of our presentation today to share some important information with you about that. And I believe Ms. Bolander is gonna kick us off with that. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, this slide is just a brief kind of overview about all the different types of scholarships that we have um, and that students can um, look into as part of their uh, financial planning for when they are going to their next opportunity. So the first stop is merit-based scholarships and um, grants. Those are more academic and talent-related scholarships, so it's gonna be more on that. And there's need-based scholarships. So that's where you've demonstrated a financial need. So if ever you need that, there's athletic scholarships. So that's a whole separate ball game with scholarship availability. And then there's military aid, military scholarships. Like for example, the US Army National Guard, ROTC is a big scholarship that students can apply for. Um, you can also apply for financial aid. And then there's local and community scholarships. We really encourage our students to apply for the senior scholarship application. We'll be giving you more links to that later in this presentation. So as you can see, there's a lot of different opportunities for students to um, gain and receive and seek out different scholarships. So we encourage them to do that. Okay, so um, some things to keep in mind when you're applying for scholarships as you know, unfortunately, there are people that will prey upon you in this world and take advantage of people that are looking for um, opportunities. So be cautious of scams when it comes to scholarships. If there is anything that comes across that says that there's a fee required to receive a scholarship or to have your name put on a list for a scholarship, um, it's a scam and you wanna stay away from that. You should never have to pay for scholarship information or for a scholarship. Um, if it says you're guaranteed to, to receive it, if you again, if you pay money, it's a scam. So really, really make sure you're reading this and, and, and being careful with this. You know, scholarships can be like a part-time job. The more time you put into it and the more research you do, the more you get out of it. So make sure that you are researching these scholarships, finding the ones that are your, the best fit for you. And that's something that the career counselors can help with as well. Um, making the time to actually sit down and do the scholarships. You wanna make sure that you are putting your best information and, and, and really filling out these applications um, you know, in the best way possible because you are, are looking to receive something from um, the scholarship. So make time, so put down a time 
for you to sit down and work specifically on scholarships. And if you need help, please ask for it. But again, your counselor, your career counselors can assist with that. Deadlines are important. Um, as with everything, you wanna make sure that, you know, if there's a firm deadline, you adhere to it. And if you need a recommendation for a scholarship, please give your recommenders plenty of notice so that they can write a really good letter for you to increase your um, chances of receiving that scholarship. Thank you, that's great information. So make sure you're keeping that in mind students. So where can you find scholarships? This is where a question that we get all the time. So make sure you are bookmarking these resources as we're going through them. We also will be sharing these slides out um, on Schoology today and through email for everyone who registered. So make sure you have these links and that you save them so you can go back to them when you're looking for scholarships later in the school year. Um, the Career Center website is the first one we're gonna look at here. So this one is just our Hanover County Public Schools website. So if you go to that website, you're going to see on the Career Center page, all of the links that we're about to go over um, as well, along with other like quick links to different databases, okay? So if you're ever like, I can't remember where those links were, I can't remember where to find anything, you can just go to our main website and that's going to have all of the links available there. And this is a bit.ly link that you can use to get to it quickly. All right, our virtual career center, we showed that earlier this week, um, but this is really kind of just a one-stop shop for a variety of resources, scholarships being one of them. We do have our uh, scholar, senior scholarship application listed on that, just a link to it. So if you, when you go to that virtual career center, again, several different um, pic pictures on that page that click to different websites. Um, again, senior scholarship application, we've got our senior handbook, we've got our scholarship opportunities spreadsheet, a link to that, which lists all of our um, local scholarships with our high schools, but also scholarships in our community, scholarships with different organizations, different people that have reached out to us to say, hey, I want your students to know about our scholarships Will you post it on our sco your scholarship opportunity spreadsheet. So that is just a great, great resource that you absolutely are gonna want to bookmark um, to look for scholarships, but also resources for career searching, for military, for college admissions information, kind of everything, one-stop shop. Um, so make sure you check out our virtual career center when you get a chance. So as Ms. Edwards just mentioned, our scholarship opportunity spreadsheet, which is listed on our career center website and on the uh, virtual career center, that is a sheet that you definitely wanna bookmark. Um, at the top of it, you're going to see all the different databases in green and white. Um, that you can go through and start searching for scholarships. But then below that, you're gonna see them listed by deadline date. So there's not a lot on there right now by deadline date because it's just the start of the year. But starting, you know, once the school year starts, we start getting scholarships rolling in. And by January, February, there are lots of scholarships listed on this page. So you wanna make sure it's something you check like once a week keep going back to to see what's new on there and what you could apply for. But by January, February, you really wanna check it a lot. And those deadlines are usually March and April for the scholarships. So that's when we get a lot of scholarship information coming in and you want to make sure you're checking that sheet a lot to apply for scholarships and save some time, to get those done before the deadline dates. Okay, our senior scholarship application. So um, we have sent links out to our senior scholarship application starting August 1st. This is a Google form that all seniors need to fill out, highly recommended, you need to do it, must do it, um, because this is what we use, this is the information we use to consider you for scholarships among all of our high schools. And so without filling out that form, you won't be able to be in that pool of candidates that are considered for all of these amazing, awesome scholarships. And there are a lot of them. Um, so we uh, make sure that you do that. There's some time now before we've started school, you could go and get that senior scholarship application completed now um, and kind of check that box and get it off your plate. Uh, the deadline for it is uh, December 31st, 2022. Um, but again, 
we recommend getting it done sooner than later so you can be considered for all of these scholarship opportunities. In the actual application, it will ask just for some basic demographic information. And then it's also going to ask for, um, there's a section to put activities, awards, accolades, that type of thing, any kind of work experience you've had, uh, room for uh, putting a personal statement, and then also a section for any additional information that you would like the Senior Scholarship Committee to know. You don't have to add additional information, but if you would like to, you certainly can. So it's a great opportunity for you and seniors. Please make sure you get that done as soon as you can, okay? So also we have social media pages for Hanover Career Counseling on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So make sure you are following us um, so that you can see anything that we share out about scholarship opportunities, about announcements, deadlines, um, that's a great place to check for information. All right, and I did um, just real quick see a, a question come through, I believe about the senior scholarship application and if you needed to come, what was the, did you see that Ms. Bolander? So can we update the senior scholarship form if we already submitted it? Good question, we do get that question every year. Um, so once it's been submitted, um, you can't update the form, you can resubmit it, um, but I would let us know, let your career counselor know if you're submitting it again because you didn't have like the right information on there or something needs to be corrected or just let your career counselor know so they can add in the information for you. Yeah. you have anything to add to that? I'm um, just gonna say all the links have been added now too. So if you want to go ahead, you can get those links out of the chat so that's easily accessible for everyone at this time. And I would also add to that, that um, when we sent out the senior scholarship application link, there was also a link in there to um, information that we ask on the senior scholarship application. So you can kind of prepare yourself for, for doing that. It typically takes, if you were to sit in one sitting, it probably takes about 30 to 45 minutes to complete the senior scholarship application. But again, you could prepare yourself ahead of time knowing, hey, I'm gonna need to write a personal statement. I have basic demographic information. So just kind of look at that Schoology post and we will regularly keep putting that out there um, in case you missed it. So just great question though. Thank you for asking that. Um, next, we just said check Schoology. So uh, we put a lot of information out there. I know you all get a lot of our posts um, and not just ours, you're getting them from a lot of different places, but uh, just make sure you're making note to pay attention to any Schoology posts that you're seeing coming from your career counselors, your school counselors, because that is really our best way to get information out to our students as quickly as possible. And there's a lot of great opportunities and we don't want you to miss them. So make sure you're checking Schoology. And if you're not on the class of pages, so class of 2023, class of 2024, you need to be added to those pages. So let us know or let your school counselor know, uh, let someone know that you need to be added to that group if you're not on there. Because that's where a lot of important information is gonna be, especially if you're a class of 2023, there's lots of important senior information coming out. So you wanna make sure you're not missing anything. Uh, we also have grasp advisors at each of our high schools and you're going to hear very shortly from one of our grasp advisors at Atlee High School um, and they have wonderful information for you. They're a great resource to help you with your FAFSA, which you're going to hear a lot about in a moment. Um, and they also have scholarship opportunities that you can apply for. So you want to make sure that you're meeting with them um, and talking to them so that you can get all of their expert advice. Um, for college specific scholarships, several, most schools have their own scholarships uh, within their school that different donors, uh, different departments um, have, have given money to give to students applying to go to school there. So make sure you're checking, if you're looking at different schools that you're going to be applying to, check their websites and see what scholarships are out there. There may be some, um, some require, of course, once you've been accepted that then you can actually apply for them, but there may be other ones that are outside of that as well. So just kind of look at those school websites, contact the financial aid office. They will also always know or be able to direct you in the right place of scholarships for their college. So another important place to look. And some colleges have a specific deadline for you to apply by in order to be considered for merit scholarships. 
So just make sure if they have an early deadline to be considered for scholarships, you have to have like your application in and then you're automatically considered that you know what that deadline is. So you can get your application in. Sometimes that's November 1st or 15th or December 1st. Um, so you wanna make sure you know that. So we have a question from the chat. For the senior scholarship application, it asks to put our cumulative GPA and to use PowerSchool. Should we use the app on our phone or use the GPA on the computer because they typically show up as different GPAs? I'll answer that one. So I would not use the app. The um, PowerSchool app is not supported by Hanover County Public Schools. And so oftentimes that information is not always accurate. So I would recommend logging in using PowerSchool on your laptop, your Chromebook, your computer, and um, accessing it that way. You can also go through Parchment and request the self view of your transcript and it'll have your information um, there as well. But I would definitely not use the PowerSchool app for your GPA. Good to know, good question. Uh, and finally, make sure you're asking around for different organizations that you're involved with. Um, an, an employer, if you're employed students or a parent's employer, sometimes they offer scholarship opportunities. Um, if you're involved with a club or a sports, you know, uh, a league that you were involved with at, you know, when you were younger, they might have a scholarship opportunity. Uh, the bank that you use or your parents use, if you attend church, there could be all kinds of different opportunities that, that people don't even know about because they haven't asked about it. So make sure you are talking to people that you are involved with outside in the community and see if there's any scholarships available through things that you volunteer with or um, places you work, et cetera. Okay, now we're going to hear from one of our wonderful GRASP advisors, Ms. Patty Wood, who is the GRASP advisor at Atlee High School. Thank you. Um, so what is GRASP? GRASP is a nonprofit that helps students and their families access financial aid and scholarships so that the student can continue his or her education after high school. We have GRASP advisors in every high school in the greater Richmond area, as well as many other counties in Virginia. We're actually in over 100 schools in Virginia, and we support your guidance counselors in the financial aid part of going to college or community college. Um, GRASP advisors services are free and confidential. So what does a GRASP meeting look like? You set up a meeting with us and that could be a meeting with a parent or a student or parent and student together. And we'll explain financial aid and how the process works. And we can answer any questions you want and actually assist you with filling out some of the documents. We are here for you and um, our services are free. Uh, the GRASP advisors for Hanover are listed on this slide. Um, at Patrick Henry High School, it's Ms. Semmel. At Hanover High School, it's Ms. Jordan. At the Georgetown School, it's Ms. Powell. At Atlee, it's Ms. Wood, me. And at Mechanicsville High School, it's Ms. Hassett. Uh, you can call them or email them. Um, and if you lose this information or just have a question, you can actually contact your school's uh, guidance department and they will give you our contact information. Um, the next slide, please. Uh, so let's get ready. You're sort of, when you're applying to college, you're about to start a race on two parallel tracks. One is the admission track and the other is the financial track. The two tracks will intersect when you are accepted to a school. Each track has its own deadlines, its own forms, and its own language. So I'm here to talk about the financial part of the financial track. Where do you start on the financial track? Well, you know, first of all, we say have a realistic target in mind by having a reality check conversation with your parents. Applying to college or community college is really exciting, but it's also kind of scary. Um, talk to your family, discuss your family's philosophy, uh, flesh out what you think you're gonna do, uh, have conversations about how does your family plan for you to pay to go to school? 
Do they support taking on debt for higher education? How much do they expect you to pay for you to go to school and how much are they able to pay for? You also wanna identify available resources you might have, you know, savings you or your, fam your parents have um, and uh, how much money you might be able to earn this year. Also scholarships are really important. And I just really wanna say the career counselors are awesome and it's just work and you do have to set aside time for this. That's what it takes is time. And then also you wanna come up with a protection plan. And what I mean by that is, suppose you don't go into your, get into your top choice school. What's your plan then? Suppose you don't get the financial aid that you think you're going to get. What's your plan then? It's good to have a, an alternative plan and create it up front because it's easier to um, implement such a plan when you set it up early on. Okay, financial aid is definitely not one size fits all, but there are a few things that hold true for everyone. And the biggest piece is filing the, it's called the FAFSA the free application for federal student aid. Why is it important? Because it is the key to tapping into financial resources. Um, the types of federal funds you can get are as a Pell Grant and other grants. And in, if, just in case you don't know, grants are free money. You wanna take them and run and you do not have to pay them back. It's also how you access work study, which is a job at your school that pays you and that money you receive is not held against you on your financial aid form the next year and it is paid directly to you to use you could use it for essentials like toothpaste or you could use it to go out on friday night or you could use it to pay your tuition and most importantly it's how you can access a federal student loan and i just like to say this because 17 and 18 year old people usually do not have significant income or assets. So if you went to a bank and tried to get a loan, you wouldn't qualify. You would have to get a credit worthy adult to co-sign with you. The loan you get through the FAFSA is your loan. It is the student's loan. The parents do not have to co-sign. And um, it's a pretty good loan. This year, this past year, the interest rate was 3.75%, and it doesn't become due until six months after you stop going to school or graduate. So you don't have to pay it back while you're going to school. Another key thing I want to say is you fill out that application. You don't have to take that student loan. You never have to take it. But it's nice to have filled it out so that come May and you're thinking about how you're going to pay for school that you know it's an option if you need it. Also, you have to fill out the FAFSA to qualify for the BGAP, which is a state uh, grant that is offered by in st state colleges in Virginia to Virginia residents. And uh, you also have to fill out the FAFSA to qualify for some institutional funds and private scholarships. In particular, if a scholarship says financial need is one of their qualifications, the way you establish that you have financial need is by filling out the FAFSA. Um, and a lot of even merit-based scholarships or schools that offer merit-based scholarships don't consider students who don't fill out a FAFSA because filling it out is signaling that money matters to your family in your decision about where you're going to go to school. Let's take a closer look at the FAFSA. The FAFSA is never a waste of time um, because you, everyone pretty much accesses that student loan possibility through it and you don't know what you're gonna qualify for and it may be required for other scholarships that you uh, are applying for. The quickest way to fill it out is online and make sure you are at the official site, which is studentaid.gov. Something that is really cool about the FAFSA is unlike colleges where you have to fill out an admissions application to each school, you only fill out the FAFSA one time. You list all of the schools you plan to apply to, and you can even include schools where you're considering applying but are not sure. Um, because if you don't ever end up applying to a school, it doesn't, it just sits out there in space. 
Um, the FAFSA works at every public and private college in the United States and all of the community colleges in Virginia. When you fill it out, it asks for information and the primary drivers are things like family size, family income, parents' age, uh, number of students that will be in college, and your assets. Remember, they never wanna know the value of the house you're living in, and they don't want you to include your retirement uh, money uh, in your uh, assets. Uh, after you fill out the FAFSA, it will come up with a number for you, the student, which is called your EFC, and it's your expected family contribution, and that will be sent to all the colleges that you apply to. Um, you want to complete, so more about the FAFSA. You want to complete the FAFSA. You are completing it for next year, so it's the 23-24 FAFSA. It doesn't become live until October 1st. Um, so you can't fill it out till then, and you'll use your calendar year 2021 20, taxes, which you filed in the spring of 2022. Do not wait until you are admitted to a school to fill out the FAFSA. In fact, you can fill it out now before you're even sure exactly which schools you're going to apply to because you just list all the schools you might apply to on it. Um, and if you or a member of your family qualifies for free or reduced lunch, talk to your counselor or your GRASP advisor because it's possible you uh, qualify for college application fee waivers and SAT fee, wa uh, fee waivers. Um, there is another financial aid uh, application you'll hear about called the uh, CSS profile. Oops, sorry, let me start on the first thing. FAFSA deadline is called the priority deadline. So if you hear people talk about it, the priority deadline is associated with each school and you can find that date on your school's website. Uh, it never hurts to file fire financial aid early. There is some money that schools have called institutional funds that they have and it's limited. And when they see students they want, they give, they offer that money and once it's gone, it's gone. But it's also never too late to fill out a FAFSA. That priority deadline, if you get your FAFSA in by that deadline, they are saying you will be considered for the first round of money that they hand out. Um, and then, but not everybody they offer money to goes to the school. So they get some of the money back and then students who file after the priority deadline will be considered for that money that comes back. Now, back to the CSS profile for financial aid. That is a more detailed financial aid form that is required at a few colleges in Virginia, um, UVA, William Mary, University of Richmond, and Washington and Lee. Uh, it, you, the FAFSA is free. The CSS profile costs about $20 um, for each school. You can get a fee waiver for that too. Uh, if you need help filling it out, uh, feel free to come set up a meeting. I can help you with that. And you will find that on the college board. Uh, it is more detailed information and it does ask for things that are not included on the FAFSA, like your retirement money and your value of your uh, the home you live in. Um, and I think that's out there. Uh, oh, one thing I didn't mention on the previous slide, there is a new uh, financial aid document that can help you access state aid. And it's called the VASA, V-A-S-A. And um, if you can fill out the FAFSA, you do that and that accesses federal and state aid. But for DACA students, and some other students who cannot access federal aid, the VASA is a, a way for you to, it's almost just like the VASPA, but it's just done by the state for you to get access to state aid. Um, okay, resources that are available. Patty? Right. Yes. Can I interrupt with a quick question from the chat? I know it's been answered in the chat, but I think for um, anybody who's viewing again, this would be a good, Question, what family members taxes do you list? Do you also list your own taxes if you are applicable to do so? Great question, thank you for interrupting. So, um, well, I don't mean interrupting, but thank you for asking that question. Um, so yes, 
uh, whoever is the parent on your FAFSA, they have to put, uh, they have to fill out information from their taxes. And the student, if they've had a job, has to fill out information from their tax forms. Now, it's possible that people have worked and did not have to file a tax return because they didn't earn enough money. In fact, for most students, that, that is the case, in which case you don't need to put anything from your tax return on there. Um, and who is your parent on the FAFSA is sometimes very straightforward and what income needs to be included. And some families, it's more complicated. Uh, if you go to the online um, form, they will give you information about who is your parent and who needs to fill it out. And I also can help you with that. I'm happy to help you with that. Uh, hopefully that answers the question. Um, okay, so yes, April? Yes, so we also had the question, um, can, should rising seniors be filling out the FAFSA application now? And the form does not open until October 1st. So if you are a current rising senior this year, you can begin filling out that application on October 1st. That's when it opens up. Thank you, yes. Um, okay, so back to resources that are available. Uh, GRASP, where I work, our website has um, scholarship applications uh, uh, on and scholarships on our website. So look there and also just has information of ways to navigate financial aid. Make an appointment to have a meeting with your GRASP advisor. GRASP offers at least two scholarships at every high school we are in, but you can't qualify for our scholarship without meeting with us. Um, also, university financial aid offices and websites, they are great resources. And I just want to really encourage students to call the financial aid office at a school they're really interested in. It can seem very intimidating, but it, they are there for you. They want to talk to you and they will be very nice and helpful and they want to talk to you. Um, other websites that are good to uh, access fafsa.ed.gov. That's where you can fill out the FAFSA. It's also the same website that you reach by through studentaid.gov. And collegescorecards.ed.gov is a great website for comparing schools. Um, it was set up by the U.S. government to help determine the value of higher education options. And each school that's on there, it will compare the cost, the graduation rate, in the um, average starting salary or average salary four years after graduation. So it's a good way to compare schools. Um, Virginia Wiz Wizard is a website uh, put together by the Virginia Department of Education uh, to help evaluate um, community college options and what you might wanna do education-wise or career-wise and how to pursue that education-wise. In particular, Virginia has a guaranteed um, admission agreement between community colleges and four-year colleges in Virginia. And this Virginia website has, I mean, this Virginia Wizard website has those agreements on it so you can look at them. And what that program is, is if you go to a community college in Virginia and you meet certain grade and coursework requirements, you take general education requirements for two years at the community college, then you are guaranteed admission and you meet the requirements of the timing and the uh, grade point average requirements, then you are guaranteed admission to the four year college that you, of, uh, that you selected. Uh, you don't have to apply to that school, you actually just, notify them the semester ahead that you are coming. And uh, for most programs, you can complete the four-year college degree in two years after that. So a total of four years, you get the same diploma that everybody else gets that started at that school um, their freshman year. And you pay a significantly lower cost. So it's great financially, and it can be a great opportunity to access a program you could not get directly out of uh, high school. Um, another great website is thecollegeboard.com. That's where you can find information about or access testing options. Um, 
And then also usnews.com slash education slash best colleges paying for college uh, identifies schools that are great, um, great opportunities financially and evaluate schools financially. Um, okay, so let's review. What can you do today? So number one, make an appointment to have a meeting with your grasp advisor. Two, set expectations with your parents. Talk about it with your parents. Um, talk about what next year looks like, uh, what they feel like they can pay for and what they expect you to pay for. Because knowing about it now helps you set up a plan that you can implement. If you don't have the conversation till May, it's hard to figure it out. And take an inventory of your current resources. Um, what have your parents saved? What have you saved? Do you have family members who might be able to help you out? Um, and uh, review your protection plan. Remember by that, I mean, um, have a backup plan. What if you don't get the financial aid that you think you're gonna get, or you don't get into your um, top choice school? And I really encourage students to apply to a wide range of schools because the school that you just barely get in, you're probably not going to be offered what's called merit aid. And that is aid you get for being an outstanding student. Um, but if you apply to a school where you are a relatively stronger student, meaning you cross the 70th percentile for SATs and grades, well, you might not just be offered um, financial need-based aid, you might be offered merit aid at that school, which can make it a great option. And finally, research and apply for scholarships. And it just takes time. You need to say, um, I'm going to spend two hours a month, two hours a week, whatever, looking for scholarships, but budget the time. And I also want to say, as a, I'm a totally unbiased resource, but uh, community college in Virginia is an exceptional opportunity. Um, it is a great way to save money in going to school um, or to access, to, to, to help define what you want to do by exploring different programs and get on the path to do what you want. And I want to wish you all great luck uh, this year and when you're applying to schools. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wood. That was wonderful information uh, you provided. We really appreciate it and appreciate you being here. Um, with that, we want to welcome our wonderful friends from Reynolds. Um, they are wonderful partners with us with Hanover County Public Schools. And we are really fortunate today to have um, people from the admissions, scholarships, and financial aid departments in Reynolds. And to start us off is the wonderful, amazing Jessica Anderson. She's a student outreach and recruitment specialist uh, with Reynolds and a great partner for us. So thank you, Jessica, for being here and for presenting today. Wow, thank you, Mrs. Edwards, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I do appreciate being able to spend some time this morning with Hanover County. We, uh, Patty, you said you're completely unbiased. Well, I'm totally biased. I'm totally biased in my love for Hanover County, having worked with you all over the past three years. But then also just thinking about the community college experience and what it can mean to our parents and our students who are on the call today. I have to be very honest with you guys. Uh, my name is Jessica Anderson. If you were to look at my resume, you would see uh, Virginia Tech, you would see University of Georgia. And if you paid attention, you would see a little bit of community college up in Northern Virginia. And so, I come to you with a lot of love for this experience, um, a lot of faith in the opportunity to either experience the guaranteed transfer in order to achieve your dream of going to that four-year, that dream four-year institution, and or another option that we'll talk about in just a second. So as you see on the screen there, um, there's some keywords that are going to stand out. I'm going to drive your eyes all the way to the bottom. Whoever is paying for your education, whoever's pocket this is coming out of, whether it's the federal pocket or your great-great-great-grandma's pocket, 
there is a value to education. There is a cost to education. And what we are hoping for you all to know is that out of all of the resources that Ms. Woods spoke about, that the community college is going to give you exactly what you would need academically from a four-year institution, but we're going to save you. We're going to save you about $4,800, $4,800, excuse me, $4,800 per year in tuition and or even looking at some of those shorter term programs. Uh, next slide, please. So thinking about the fact that there are 23 community colleges throughout the state of Virginia, but you guys in Hanover County, uh, we are the one, J. Sergeant Reynolds is the one that is closest to you. So what we are proposing, what we are encouraging you all to think about is that when it comes to choosing your next best step, just like Ms. Wood said, apply to those dream schools. Keep those four-year schools in mind. And so whether it is a school that you see on the screen here or thinking about some of our top transfer schools, which are VCU and Virginia Tech, um, Liberty is very popular that we are designed to help you get that two years, which is equivalent to that associate's degree. And then like Ms. Wood said, a guaranteed admission to those four year schools, but at a fraction, at a fourth of the cost. And so being able to understand exactly what that means, uh, next slide please, is being able to understand what does it mean to go to college? What is it that you're paying for? Why was all of that information that Ms. Wood shared with which, by the way, Miss Wood, I got to point out, I always try to take notes because, you know, there's always something new to learn. And I didn't even realize with the FAFSA, when you all are searching for your, you know, to fill out your FAFSA, you don't go to fafsa.gov or fafsa.edu. So keep that in mind. I believe the website is studentaid.gov, which is an important point to remember, right? So when you guys are starting that application and trying to decide what schools you want to apply to, we are encouraging you to consider Reynolds, whether it is to be able to earn that associates, which can be an associate of arts or an associate of science, which that's that two years that Ms. Wood was talking about, which is equivalent to, if you think about maybe 20 classes, so about five classes per semester, which is going to give you the equivalent of about 60 credits. So guys, keep in mind, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for those credits in order to apply them to the specific degree. So you would do two years with uh, community college, and then you would transfer on to that four-year school to get uh, the other two years, which would be equivalent to your bachelor's. But let's say that's not the path for you. Some of the folks on the call may be more interested in getting into the field getting out there and starting to work. So keep in mind, there's three other options that are designed not for transfer, but rather to get you into your field of interest. So think about the Associate of, of Applied Science, which is also a two-year program, but it's designed to give you the skills to start working. So for example, here, think about our automotive program. Uh, here at Reynolds, we have a, an Associate of Applied Science in Automotive Technology uh, partnership with uh, Toyota, and it's designed to give you the academic piece and to get you working at the same time, which is a little bit different than the certificates and the career study certificates. So think about the difference between about 20 classes and maybe seven to 12 classes for those certificates, which are going to be very specific to your field of interest. And so in this case, it could be emergency uh, services. It could be information technology, where you're only taking the classes that are needed for that field that you want to work in. So bottom line is, guys, and you're getting ready to hear from our experts in the financial aid office here at Reynolds, that regardless of what path is for you, regardless of how long you plan on staying in college or what you decide uh, come the end of your senior year, there's a value to your education. Somebody is going to pay for it. And there are a lot of different ways to receive funding assistance to help you achieve your goals. And so now I'll turn it over to one of our experts over in the financial aid office. Um, we have Sharika Charity with us and Meredith Kane. And before we move on, um, there is a question from the chat about something you said, Ms. Anderson. Um, the, the student asked, transfer program is only to Virginia schools, not out of state? Great question, Michelle. I see your um 
your chat there. And so the bottom line is, guys, it's the difference between guaranteed and not guaranteed. And so transfer agreements are actually pretty popular across the country, just like community colleges are. So the same conversation is happening with students out in you know, California that they have community colleges with guaranteed transfer agreements. So folks that are here in Virginia, it's guaranteed for the schools in Virginia. But if you do decide to transfer to a school, say in California, there would just have to be a conversation between Reynolds and your transcript, the classes that you take and that four-year school um, located out of state, just to make sure that things are matching up based off of what they need you to have coming in. Okay. <laughs> Um, so my name is Meredith Kane. I'm a financial aid technician here at Reynolds, and I'm here with Sharika Charity, who's the director of financial aid at Reynolds. And we're just going to go over um, our process at the school and things that are uh, grants that are available to students um, here at Reynolds. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat because um, we're monitoring that and we can answer them for you. So like Ms. Wood uh, had mentioned, the first step to financial aid is always completing the FAFSA. Um, it's at studentaid.gov. For the 23-24 um, uh, school year, the FAFSA is going to open up October 1st. The first time you do the FAFSA, you're going to have to create a FSA ID, which is like a username and password. And you want to keep that in a safe spot because you're only going to use it maybe once or twice a year. But each year you fill out the FAFSA, you'll need to um, remember what your FSA ID is. Each year that you plan on attending college, you'll need to uh, do the FAFSA. So every year for the following academic year, the FAFSA will open up um, October 1st. You can put up to 10 schools on the FAFSA, um, but we wanna make sure that you put Reynolds on the FAFSA as well. So the school code for Reynolds is the 003759, and that allows us to be able to see your FAFSA information when you're um, enrolling at our school. This is new this year. This is the VASA application. So it's the Virginia Alternative State Aid application. This is available to students who are not eligible to complete a FAFSA because they don't meet all the eligibility requirements. So if you meet all the eligibility requirements for the FAFSA, you don't need to complete this. This is um, specific to students who are not able to complete the FAFSA. You want to make sure that if you are going to do the VASA application, it'll follow the same calendar uh, guidelines as the FAFSA, but you do it early um, so that you get the most amount of aid eligible through state grants. Uh, these are the FAFSA priority deadlines for Reynolds. So for fall, you want to make sure that you complete the FAFSA or the VASA by April 15th. This does not mean if April 15th passes that you can no longer do a FAFSA with Reynolds. It just means um, for students, the most amount of aid you might be eligible for, you want to get your FAFSA done early because some grants are, um, there's a budget for it. And once that budget runs out, we're going to prioritize the students who got their FAFSA done first. And then if there's um, those funds are available after April 15th, they can be awarded, but that's not a guarantee. So when you do the FAFSA or the VAS application, what you're we're getting off that application is something called the EFC. So the EFC is the expected family contribution. That number is not going to change um, no matter what school you apply to. That's the number that goes to each college, whether it's community college or a four-year school. What changes a lot is the cost of attendance at a school. So four-year schools, private schools are more expensive than a community college. So your cost of attendance is greater. Um, how we determine what financial aid package you might be, avail uh, might be um, available to you is taking that cost of attendance the e and subtracting out your EFC. And then we determine your financial need and we'll be able to determine what grants you may be eligible for. So this is a... Um, cost comparison of schools in Virginia. So these are average costs of schools throughout the state. The blue bar is representing the four-year college's um, average cost of attendance. Um, the red bar is the average cost of a Virginia community college. And then the green bar represents the savings um, for students average for, per year. So you can see that if your goal is to get a bachelor's degree, your first two years of school 
are basic classes typically that you can um, save this amount of money by getting your associate's degree, degree and then transferring to a four-year school and then finishing out your bachelor's degree there. So it's a way to save money, um, but still earning the same degree that you would if you went to a four-year school. Once you receive your FAFSA, um, when we determine what type of uh, aid you're eligible for, that's broken down into two major categories. There's gift aid, which is scholarships and grants. That is money that you do not pay back. If you are um, awarded these, they are yours. There are also loans, which at some schools, they automatically package loans in their financial, financial aid packages for students. We don't do that at Reynolds. Um, student loans are available to students. We just have an extra application that you would have to submit for um, to be eligible for one. The other thing we have is the work study employment. So these are part-time jobs that we have for students that can help um, pay for some of the cost of college. And then these are the types of grants that we um, award students. So the Pell is the largest federal grant. That's the one that most people um, have heard of. Then the other one is the SEOG, COMA, VGAP, PTAP, Supplemental Aid, and then Foster Care Grant, and then G3. So the Pell Grant and SEOG and Commonwealth Grant, those are an automatic process for us. If you're eligible for them, then we automatically would award them to students. The um, bottom state grants, there's extra qualifications for those grants that we would um, review students to determine whether they're eligible for them. And I just want to mention this grant. It's been a, I think we're going on our second year for G3. It is um, a grant that, that's offered through the community colleges for students who are interested in healthcare, information technology, manufacturing and skilled trades, early childhood education, and public safety. Um, the thing I like about this grant is sometimes students' um, awards don't cover their full tuition or cover their book costs. G3 will, if you're in these programs, will pick up the balance of your tuition and give a books, book allowance. So if you're in this program, um, one of these programs, then G3 can help cover the entire cost of your tuition so that you don't owe anything for that um, while you're in school. Student loans um, is money that students and parents can borrow to help pay for college. Uh, federal loans are the ones most common um, that students have heard about. They're broken down into subsidized and unsubsidized loans. Um, for Reynolds, we have an application that you can fill out um, if you are interested in a federal student loan. That loan is taken out in the student's name, so the student's responsible for paying that back when they finish um, going to school. The other loans that we have available are PLUS loans. They're commonly called Parent PLUS loans. There is a fixed interest rate with those, flexible limits. Those are taken out in a parent's name, so the parent would be responsible for paying those back. And they do require a credit check if you take a PLUS loan out. And then certain banks and financial institutions offer private education loans that you can um, apply for, just another alternative to help pay for college. If you do decide to take out a federal student loan, you do need to go back into studentaid.gov and complete a master promissory note and entrance counseling. And then when you finish school, exit counseling. Um, but it's still under the studentaid.gov under the loan section. Quick question from the chat. Mm -hmm. Is there a maximum amount of gift aid you can receive to offset your EFC? There is a maximum. <laughs> Your gift aid, gift aid cannot exceed your cost of attendance. So that's where different schools, the cost of attendance is different at each school. So if your EFC is zero, then you can be awarded up to the cost of attendance. If your EFC comes back and it's 16,000 and the cost of attendance is 16,000, then there's no room to award gift aid. Does that make sense? That's where the EFC and the school that you're attending, the cost of attendance, that's where that um, calculation comes in play and whether we can give a certain amount of gift aid or whether you're eligible for certain, certain grants. 
you could still be eligible for scholarships. This is more about federal aid and state aid. Um, scholarships would not fall under that category. They said thank you. So I think oh. you answered that question. <laughs> All good, Meredith. All right. Um, federal work study is programs based. Um, it's for students who um, want to work part time on campus. So it just kind of helps um, pay for some of that extra college expenses, but maybe transportation, um, maybe pay for some books and just some living expenses. At Reynolds, um, we have students work up to about 20, 25 hours a week. Our pay rate is $11 an hour. Um, students can complete an application and submit it to federal uh, FWS at Reynolds.edu. We try to match students up with their interests. So if you are um, an IT major, we try to, to find some a position within the IT field at the school that you can get some experience um, so that you look more, um, you look better to employers once you finish your um, college degree. And there are other educational resources to help pay for college besides the um, uh, federal and state aid. So we have scholarships. Um, the scholarship office at Reynolds will speak on the Reynolds Common Scholarship. There's employer tuition assistance programs. So whether the student or the parent um, is working, it's worth asking your employer if they have tuition assistance programs. Sometimes it's just for the employee, but sometimes they extend it to your children. Um, so it's always worth asking. There's the Virginia 529 account um, that some students have. And once you start planning for college, it might be worth asking if family members or godparents have set up a 529 account for a student. So that can help pay for some of the expenses. We do have a veteran services office here at Reynolds. So there are veterans education benefits that a student might have available to them and they can walk you through that process. And then our business office always sets up payment plans for students um, to help pay for college expenses as well. And I just wanna mention this um, when we talk about financial aid. For federal and state aid, there are requirements you have to maintain in order to stay eligible for these, these grants. And it's called satisfactory academic progress. Um, students are required to keep a minimum GPA of 2.0. Um, in order to maintain their financial aid. There's a completion rate requirement of 67%, which means you have to be successful in 67% of the classes that you attempt. And then there's a time frame rule, the 150% rule, which is just trying to help students main, get through a program in a timely manner. Most students who run into this um, time frame rule um, switch their programs a lot. So you wanna make sure that you're partnering with advisors so you get into the program that you know that you'll be successful in. And it's not that you can't change a program, but you want to make sure that you're not doing it often so that it affects your financial aid. And then the financial aid office's um, communication with students. The financial aid central is our section of the webpage on the Reynolds.edu um, website. It has a lot of information, can answer a lot of questions. Um, once a student um, enrolls at Reynolds, we send out students um, information in their message center and through their um, email. And then if we need information from you, we'll either send you a message through your message center or we'll create a to-do list for you um, that lets us let the student know what kind of information we need from them that they can submit to us. And um, just like what Ms. Wood's saying about we want to help you through this process. You know, the first time you do it, it can be a little intimidating. Um, the Reynolds Financial Aid Team, we do FAFSA workshops. We do FAFSAs on First Fridays where students, we can help them do the FAFSA. Um, we can always come into our offices. We have offices at the Parham Road campus and the downtown campus. And we will sit down and help you do the FAFSA if you need help. Um, every Wednesday, we have virtual financial aid office hours that you don't even have to come to campus. Um, you just log in and there will be somebody there to help you walk through the financial aid process. And then if you need to email or contact us, it's finaid at reynolds.edu. And then our phone number um, is 855-874-6682. And we will always be happy to help you guys complete the FAFSA or walk you through the verification process.
And then now Mary Ann McGee from the um, scholarship office is going to talk to you about the Reynolds Scholarship. Great. Thank you, Meredith. Thanks, everybody, for hanging on in there. I see we're really at time, so I'm going to be brief, but we're always here to answer additional questions. Our common scholarship application window is from December 1 through March 1. That means you can apply for a scholarship starting December the 1st through March the 1st. That money, if you get the scholarship, kicks in for the following fall semester. So you would be notified over the summer and have your money in place um, for the fall semester. Very simple to complete, it's a few minutes. We also have a, um, an email address, scholarships at reynolds.edu. If you've got any questions at all, you've heard this, I'm going to repeat this. Here's the pro tip, get your FAFSA done. Um, sometimes people think, well, if I'm gonna get a scholarship, I don't, I don't, I don't need financial aid. Yes, you do, because the scholarship really backfills between your aid and what you have to pay, and that can fill that in, but it's probably not going to cover soup to nuts, okay? So go ahead and get your financial aid form submitted. All right, go to the next slide. Should I apply? Yes, okay? Like, yes, you, there is absolutely no reason if you are a Reynolds student that you should not apply because our scholarships support everything we teach. So whether you are a liberal arts major, whether you are in welding, nursing, whatever you're studying, the scholarship funds can help you. You just need a 2.0 GPA. Sometimes students don't think of themselves as the type of student to get a scholarship. We want you to think of that very differently. Yes, you are the type of student to get a scholarship. You know who's the type of student to get a scholarship? A scholarship a person who applies for a scholarship. That's the type. So go right ahead and do that. We have a high award rate here. You must be a rental student to use the funds. So you can't apply for a scholarship with us and not come. We have to see that you're enrolled first and that's how you're considered. Okay. All right. How much do you get? Well, that, that ranges. It depends on your need. It depends on the other aid that you might be getting. It sometimes depends on what you're studying. Our nursing program is a little more expensive than other programs at the college, so our nursing students typically get a bigger package. The average award is maybe $1,500 per semester. That's up or down, but at Reynolds, that's, that's a nice award um, at, at Reynolds Community College, so sometimes it's up to $2,500. Sometimes people just need a few hundred dollars for books, Every penny adds up, but you know you got to be in it to win it. If you don't apply for a scholarship, then you're not going to get the scholarship dollars. The good news is if you get the money, you can use it for tuition, fees, books, a laptop, materials. We really try to make it um, open for you to use what you need. It goes on your account. We don't hand you a scholarship check. It goes on your account, but then you can use it at the bookstore, et cetera. Somebody has to wants to know if you've taken multiple classes through Reynolds. If you are a current Reynolds student, no matter what you're taking or whether you've been here before, you can absolutely apply for a scholarship. We have people who've completed a four-year degree. They come back, they want to study, uh, you know, they they want to study med lab tech. They get scholarship funds. So as long as you're a Reynolds student, you are eligible to apply. Can't promise you'll get it, but you can certainly apply. Okay, like I said, you can always reach out to us at our email address, or you can call 523-5084. You can talk with someone. You see our, we are the Reynolds Red Hawks. You see that bookstore behind our Red Hawk there. Um, and that is where you can certainly use your dollars. Any other scholarship questions? Okay, that was a question. Do you have to be a full-time rental student? No, you do not. I'm so glad somebody asked that. You can be a part-time student. As a matter of fact, most students at Reynolds are part-time. So you can absolutely be a part-time student. Okay, I will end, I will end with this. The idea that somehow coming to a community college is, is just not that cool is a really outdated notion. You, you should meet some of our students. They are financially savvy young people who do not want to get burdened with six figures of debt. <laughs> so they come to us to do a lot of different things, but they are smart young people who have it on the ball. And they are at Reynolds because they have big plans 
for college and beyond, and they want to get through without getting hammered with debt. And scholarships are a big way to do that, and so is financial aid. So if you are on this webinar you and you're thinking seriously about coming to Reynolds, you're making a genius decision in your life. I did it. I had a lot of really people who love their experience here, our alumni love their experiences here. So really do come to us if you're thinking about it. It's a great decision. All right. Well, that concludes our virtual boot camp session for today. We want to extend a huge thank you to all of our panelists for being with us today from Reynolds, from GRASP. Um, just thank you for your time, support, and wonderful partnership. We deeply appreciate it. We also want to thank each of you, all of our students, all of our parents and families that were here with us today. Thank you. We hope you found this rewarding and uh, good information, and we appreciate you being with us. We will be sending out the recording for this video um, either later today or tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that and share it with other people um, that you know that weren't here with us today that could use it. We'd appreciate that. Uh, as We will also be sending out resources this afternoon as well, so keep an eye out for that through Schoology. Um, and then also, finally, although this concludes our virtual boot camp, we do have an in-person HTS Mini College and Career Expo event tomorrow at Hanover High School from 9 to 12 p.m. Every single person you saw on today's session will be there in person. We also have 35 representatives joining us from colleges, from different career fields, from companies, governmental agencies across the area. So please, please, if you can be there in person, come and see us, come and get information from all of these peoples and organizations and uh, colleges, and we hope to see you there. So with that, everyone, thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day, and we hope to see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.